The most common word in the last few days has been SARS, and I speak on the SARS all around us. One of the symptoms of malaria infection is fever, which in common parlance is simply high body temperature. In treating malaria, you bring down the temperature, which is a symptom, and then proceed to treat the disease. While temperature can be brought down within an hour, the actual treatment of the disease itself takes about three days. However, if we only took care of the fever without addressing what caused the fever, then the fever will be back, and soon. Because fever is just a symptom of a much deeper problem. In this case, malaria. This is a perfect analogy for the ongoing NSARS campaign. SARS is not the disease. It is only a symptom. At the heart of the evil of SARS are abuse of powers and privileges and extortion. And in the course of these, they incarcerate, they maim, and they kill. Worst of all, they get away with it without punishment. So, are there other people and groups in our society today who also abuse powers and privileges, extort, and do so with impunity? Coactions taken along this same path by non-SARS actors have the same lethal effect on the society. Essentially, there are more SARS all around us than we are conscious of. Or like some will argue, maybe there is SARS in all of us. Lawyers today are vehicles for bribing judges. Judges are accepting bribes and perverting justice. Doctors are sending patients for tests they don't require because they have a deal with the diagnostic center for a share of the test referrals. In the course of that, patients are dosed with dangerous rays that they don't need. Your file could disappear in the government office because you failed to settle. And your settlement will start from the gatekeeper to the man who signed the contract, the one who will inspect it, and the one who will raise the payment. Lecturers demand sex and money for marks. In fact, in a first-generation university some years ago, an acquaintance of mine who did an executive MBA narrated how his staff of the university helped her replace her exam script with a new one for a fee. People set up gas plants without approval. It blows up and kills the innocent. Housing authorities approve buildings on drain path, and an entire community suffers flooding. Three-story buildings are put on foundation for bungalows, and citizens perish when the building collapses. In Lagos, we have had a single building collapse in which 115 lives were lost. And somehow, life just continued. There are SARS everywhere around us, and in all of us, including the religious institutions who could have been the conscience of the society. When we look closely or inwards, we will see the SARS. They don't always have guns or uniforms like the police SARS, but they are no less lethal. My advocacy is that we keep our eye on the ball of police reforms with an understanding that SARS is just a symptom. The real disease is the police system in its entirety. Furthermore, the police is just one institution, and what we need is more than reform, just one institution. But maybe SARS is a good place to start. Congratulations on the SARS ban. Or is it too early to say that? It's not too early. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think early. it's too early. Yeah. It's been banned, it's been banned. What's, what we what's, are, what's we banned, are, really? Let's, what let's we are say, saying, well, it's been, what's is it disbanded? Or no, what? what's banned? Is it... <laughs> If you say SARS has been banned, what's SARS? SARS banned. It's SARS is just and a nomenclature. Then, exactly. Yeah, but that's so, why we're saying ban the end is what to... End, nobody say ban, end. End, end. SARS, SARS stands for something. Mm. Brutality. End it. It's an ideology. It, you know, it's not mind. an ideology. No, it's, it is. SARS is it has it's known for brutality. <laughs> and people actually perpetrate it. And then you say, people say ends brutality, ends SARS. You say, okay, yes, we are banned SARS. In its place, the very next day, Swat. you announce SARS. SARS SWAT. We SARS, don't know the requirements. SARS with another name. And, and so, with the same mentality of the same people, 
The reason why people still refer to PHC and or Ikeja Electric as is because <laughs> yes. the this left problem memories. Nothing is has persistent. Nothing, yeah. We call it problem change uniform. So if problem change uniform, now, so, so, they change that's, uniform so you can't you can't retain you can't just change a name and expect that oh yes it's like this program five panel five discussion no hold bar whether you call it advocacy whether you call it uh, a solicitorship or you call it uh, say it as it is or you call it on the flip side if the content is the same thank you it's the same mm -hmm. yes you only change the container. I beg you, second base, Jerry. Uh, it's too early. Mm. Yes, it's SARS. Um, so and, you know, it's just so strange. You know, it's because we don't have a president. That's why all yes. this is happening. No, we don't. If we had a president, he would have told them, it's a good thing you've banned it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to, and if the IG says we need a unit to deal with this menace because it's too much in this country and we can't do it with just regular police, no problem. Go and set it up all over again. Do your studies, everything you need to do before you come back and give me a position paper. That will take you six months, mm -hmm. minimum. After six months, if the president then announces the SWAT, mm -hmm. first will be more, it will be more believable. Mm -hmm. Then he will proceed to tell us what SWAT is all about. And if it begins to sound like they've tempered down SARS, then we'll give them a chance. Of course, you know Nigeria anyway. Mm. That still doesn't mean they've done the right thing. Mm. You know, but you need to do things the proper I think, way. I think um, those in charge, those at the leadership um, level, mm. in the police force, don't even understand the extent of the brutality mm. we're talking about. They know, they I don't know. think they're they? on Twitter and they're reading they the things know. they're seeing. They know. They're they know. They know. This is what I want to mm. suggest. Maybe we should have something close to a Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Yes, that has, been, commission, that has been thank said. You. So that you have victims come and talk about what they've gone through. Yeah. Then you will understand why in that committee, people are saying no to SWAT. will tell you to your face that you're lying. That is not they true. can't tell us yeah, where they are. You remember what I said. It will not be a truth commission. million people cannot be wrong. Do you know why let me tell you this i'm i'm on on an international platform a former ig of police once said to lawyers i say lawyer even with your wig and gown if a policeman with a rifle tells you jump into the gutter please do so please do so don't quote law for him because you don't know what he has taken that money all you can do while inside the gutter try to just get his <laughs> uh, name number. tag and number Whatever and that's you do, why stay most alive. of these SARS that's what it means. do not wear uniform. So that when you There's are writing no a tag. petition, you can write that name on, or the tag number. But if he kills you, mm. we will say it was accidental discharge. Have you forgotten that phrase, accidental discharge, in yeah. this country? In the case of Ugozi and the state in Benin, two young brothers were traveling. One came from Holland and they were going to Benin. The policemen stopped them on the way, on the highway close to Okada. And then they stopped. The man said, I stopped you from the bear, bear, this thing, and you stopped me by 100 meters apart from me. And the guy was like, what, what the heck? And the next thing, the man opened fire and killed the guy right there and there. Mm. And he was to shoot the other brother when his superior took the gun from him. Mm. When the matter got to court, do you know what the police defense was? That the late guy was dragging the, the gun, rifle. struggling the so rifle this is part of what we're with. Seeing. And so I, I took time to explain this to you so that you understand the mentality of even the police hierarchy. Mm. So mm. when you report some of do you know what we face in some cases with these anti-robbery squads? Okay. They will so, tell you your, your lawyer, your, your, your client is, is, is a That thief. still a doesn't prevent a lot of the victims from coming forward to say, this is what I experienced. I, yes. I, I think experience. that commission may actually... We should have something like yeah, a truth and reconciliation yes. commission. It will, it will work let us first, like MB had said, let us first audit, audit the number of people in SARS cell. See, it will, right, it, it, I agree. it will be part of the entire scheme. It will be part of the yeah. reconciliation thing. You have to let people heal. Mm. You can't just wake up and say, SWAT. And then we move on yeah. with life as usual. It's yeah. the same thing. It's the yeah. same old thing. We are not saying SWAT should move on. But we are saying we are we are we are we are saying what we know, what we experience. I was coming from 
a youth project. As you know, as the youth mentor for Lagos State, youth ambassadors under Lagos State Ministry of Youth and Social Development, we were coming from a youth project around 9 p.m. And in my area, Ogudu, Ojota, Area H, they call them Area Hotel. These guys stopped me, saw all the stickers, saw my ID, everything, stopped and said, I'm taking you to Area H. And I said, for what? He said, because you are drunk. <laughs> that was what he said. He said, I was drunk and you were driving. I laughed. Trust me, even when I was in school, I was never, I, I don't... Did Alcohol? they bring out his uh, breathalyzer to, uh, no. to know how it was? Irrelevant. But, but, but now, let me, let me shock you. <laughs> that as, point, he was talking to me, as he was talking own, to me, eh? his own his breath. Breath I could was... not stand the odor coming out yes. of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> his own, so his the drug is telling so, me, you, you understand? Not drunk so I just, you know what I did? I should enter the car. After checking my boot, checking everything, so I just did three. I just said, can I make a call? I put it on speaker. I called my wife. I said, madam. Police just stopped me at my own junction. I wanted to turn into my street, and he said I was drunk. And my wife said, <laughs> she just busted. He said, he must be the one that is you, <laughs> alcohol, how? Then I called my director, and that was it. He said, Mr. Gwenga, how? Then I called the chairman of the um, PCRC, Koshofe Local Government. That wants to say, you, alcohol, how? I'm coming there now. So when he, he now saw that, I said, we are going to the station. Let's go. So when we got to the gate, he said, OK, so what do you have there? I said, like what? Do you understand? So torture, the, and it, yes, he was the one who was drunk, but accusing yeah. me. Yeah. Let me tell you, Nigerian police, they have a way of, I don't know what they teach them in that criminology yeah. um, module. I don't know what they teach them. I don't, uh, we if, need to study. Teach them something. We need to study their, 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 their modules. Their we need to study their, their curriculum. Because trust they, me. Because they can't teach them that. Thank you. Time, it, it, we it, need to check their curriculum in police time. college. Don't worry, you have enough time to begin to check this college. <laughs> we need to move on now. <laughs> uh, okay, the earlier we put a stop to this menace, the better. I'm up next after the break.